Hi, I'm Carl Harris. We're at my shop, Rosie's Lapidary and Silver Work today. This is the start of a YouTube series where we're going to cover silversmithing and some lapidary work. We're going to go over some shop equipment, maybe some shop tips that I could share with you and show you the process of cutting a rock and shaping it into a cab and then we'll set the stone in a pendant or a bracelet, a pair of earrings. We'll go over all the equipment that we use in the shop from the lapidary equipment to the silver equipment to our polishing equipment and step-by-step -step videos will follow. Um, I hope you enjoy these and I hope I can share something that'll make your lapidary and silver work easier for you. Right. Let's come on into the shop and take a look at some of the equipment we're going to demonstrate today. We have a slab saw here. That's going to be the start of our lapidary process. Where we're actually taking slab of stone into a, a workable slab for making the cab. We're taking the, the stone after it's been slabbed on the saw here. This saw will break it down into slabs mm -hmm. of our thickness. We'll take the stone and mark it up with the template guide. Circles, pair of shapes, whatever we want to use. We'll bring that after we've marked it. We'll bring this to a trim saw. This is a ring trim saw where we can cut through the center, make circles with. This will cut out our, our rough shape. From our rough shape, we'll move to the grinders. These grinders are Framton. They're patent date of 1948, but we're still turning wheels, still doing the same process from 40 years ago. After we've cut out the rough shape, we start on this end with a coarse hard wheel. These are diamond impregnated steel wheels and uh, an 80 and 280 grit. And then we move to a foam backed diamond grit belt that uh, will allow us to take the flat spots out of the stone as we work it. Next stage, we will start polishing and we use a 3,000, 14,000, and 50,000. And finally, the final polish is done with cerium oxide on a leather pad on this end of the wheels. And that'll produce a very nice finished cab, highly polished. The idea is to get an even girdle around it, nice dome to it, and no scratches. This stone here is ready to be made into a silver pendant. Our silver portion of the shop starts over here. We start with putting a bezel around the stone. And then we're cutting our own stones. We can make our own bezels to fit. And then we use silver sheet to back our pendants. All the components are soldered on at the soldering station here. We use a um, flex shaft with coarse sandpaper all the way down to diamond impregnated silicone polishing. Uh, we take our polishing up to 50,000, which is a mirror finish. Some pieces we satin finish, brush finish, all that's done with the flex shaft. The final polish is put on with these uh, lays buffers at this stage here. When we run from a cutting compound, a rough compound here, to uh, Zam is our final polish here, which is also a great polish for the softer stones, turquoise and, and those type of stones that are very soft. This will put the final polish that you can achieve with the lapidary. This machine uh, is our steam cleaner. It puts out 60 pounds of steam pressure. For most stones, the agates, the jaspers are very safe on this. There are quite a few stones you wouldn't want to clean with a steam cleaner. But this will remove the polish and any of the residue from the polishing compounds. Uh, it's great for diamond jewelry, gold jewelry. It'll take all the hand lotions and stuff out of your ring, make it look brand new again. This is an ultrasonic drill. It doesn't actually spin, it uses silicarbide and water and a 20,000 RP uh, vibration. It uses this cone and uh, by running the water slurry on it, we'll actually uh, put a very nice clean hole in, in any of the harder stones. It's a large metal shear that we use to cut our 
our silver or copper down to usable uh, pieces. We can make bezel with this. We can uh, rough cut all our parts with it right here and uh, makes a very clean square cut. Very nice way to cut a bezel. We'd wrap this around the stone and either silver or copper. This piece of equipment here is a ring stretcher and a ring shrinker. We use this for forming rings when we make the band. This makes it perfectly round. And we need to bring it up a size or two. This would be the, the way to do it. This is our flex shaft drill. And this drill press we use for with a flex shaft uh, for drilling all the holes for piercing and, and any hole necessary uh, for cutting the back out of a pendant or whatever. This is how we'll start our saw blade. Very small drill bits. Give you an idea. That's a 20 thousandths drill bit right there. Looks like a whisker. Uh, when you're piercing, these go to the size of the saw blade that we we'll use. Most of the tools here in the shop have been modified from their original form or handmade. We do a lot of our own tools. This particular tool I would use for opening up a bezel. If this stone had already been set and had to be removed or for repair and jewelry, we've made this out of a very thin piece of stainless. You'd work it in along the bezel until the stone can come out. Almost all of our pliers, any plier with the edge on it, <clears throat> we polish on the buffers, round the edges so it doesn't mar our silver. Make sure there's no teeth or witness anything that leave a witness mark when we're working our silver. We, we work all the pliers again ourselves. With our flush cut pliers, you have to keep after them and maintenance them. Polish the back side of them here to keep them flush cut so they don't leave any mark behind on our metal. Some of our tools are very old, um, still in use. This is a Weiss cutter and the patent date is 1894 on it. It still works good. This is what we use to cut out our bales and any small silver sheet cutting. We use a variety of hand saws. Almost every piece of jewelry, every piece of jewelry needs to be cut out at some point. The idea is to have three teeth in contact with the silver at all the time or copper. And so saw blades come in 20 different sizes. This is a great tool made by Kerf. It allows you to keep all your saw blades and also gives you the proper saw blade for the thickness of the material. Excellent separator. Hard to keep track of 40 saw blades. An optivizer or magnifying casing of some sort is really helpful. This is a basic optivizer and has interchangeable lenses. Homemade solder picks with just a piece of stainless wire. This one is a titanium solder pick, commercially made. But this is how you would hold the pieces and uh, or move them while you're soldering if need to. Also can pick up a piece of solder and put it where it needs to be. In our shop, we're currently using either propane and oxygen or acetylene and oxygen. Acetylene and oxygen is terribly dirty, but really works well for heat. This is a art torch with um, the ability to change tips. It comes with six different tips and you could keep the heat very minimal and very direct to spots. This small anvil here, along with a um, high quality hammer, you can modify bezels, straighten out wire. Its uses are endless, but um, uh, keeping the hammer face polished and the top of the anvil polished will keep the witness marks out of your silver. <laughs> Where to go from here? <laughs> so what about that tool over there? Oh, yes, yes. This is one of my favorite metalworking tools we have in the shop. This is a rolling mill. It's able to do flat stock and then has a second set of wheels on the back here for doing round wire. This mill actually has a shifter on it. We can shift from the top wheels to the bottom wheels. In this demo real quick, um, we'll take a piece of round wire 
And then as we run it through the mill, we keep adjusting it down, the wheels down, and then run it through. After running it through here, four or five times, it's necessary to anneal the metal to soften it again. But this will give us our ring stock, bracelet stock. We could turn this all the way down into bezel material. It's endless how far we can drop it down. This is the anvil I use in the shop for jewelry, for stamping on. This is a piece of railroad track that the top's been flattened on. Most of my stamping is done with a small ball peen, although I do some Larger stamps, we use a much larger ball pane. All of our pieces get a Hallmark stamp. If it's sterling silver, we put a sterling stamp on it. This particular stamp here is my Hallmark with my initials in it. And then we have a Hallmark for Rosie's Lapidary in silver also. It's just simple to line up the stamp, nice and square. Stamp it, and then we have our sterling mark on it the hall market. Lots of our pieces include shot plate, stars, roses, different designs. Here's a picture of the, just a couple of the designs we make. And then this is the actual shot plate that they're made in. They're made by placing this on the anvil, taking a bead of silver or copper, whichever we're using, put it in here, and then flatten it down, and it gives us that imprint on it, and then they're cut out, soldered onto the piece. These two are, have a male and female half, and these were doing concho designs into the silver, mostly bracelets, this is a larger design, and we'll actually stamp that into the, to the work. This has been a very brief overlook at our shop of what we do here. We'll have more in-depth videos on each step of the process and show you how to make some very beautiful pendants, whether you use poppy jasper or stone of your choice. We'll go from cutting the stone all the way step to step as we, we build pendants, bracelets, earrings, cigarette lighter covers anything sterling silver that comes to our mind. Hope you've enjoyed the video and I look forward to sharing more of these in-depth videos on piece-by-piece -piece equipment as we go through this series. Thank you for watching.